This video shows one of several trips that I've done with the Hadza. I've spent time with these people and really got to know them. I've been blessed to learn a lot from them. And these videos just cover the highlights of the things that I've experienced with them. This is the second video I've done with the Hadza. And although the sound and the video are pretty poor quality, I hope you enjoy. This, um, we've been running in such harsh terrain trying to get after these baboons and they managed to get one down thank goodness but the dog's taking a toll he's a big baboon let's go take a look that is a beast of an animal look at the size of his teeth <laughs> this is the baboon the Hadza just took um, Sandile was the guy he took it down look at the size of those canines <laughs> That's my thumb. I don't have the smallest hands in the world. Um, this is, a, this is a, a big animal. So the dogs chase it into the tree. He stays in the tree. He won't come down. And that's when they put the arrow in him. But unfortunately, he got to the dog first. The dog's been bitten around the neck, bleeding profusely. I'm not so sure he's going to make it. But um, it's all part of life here. You know, it's uh, tough to see the dog suffer. But that's a lot of food. So. And second dog seriously injured. That is a deep gash. I could fit my thumb in there easily. It's just hard to see the abuse these dogs take, but this dog attacked a baboon of its own accord. We were off hunt, gonna go and uh, try and hunt pigs, and the dog went after the baboons. We rushed back, so <sighs> it is what it is just went and found the second baboon that was hit so that's two two that were ambushed in that hunt um, and unfortunately the dog that got attacked has uh, has, has died um, he died pretty short after getting attacked probably 30 minutes a lot of he lost a lot of blood looks like the uh, the baboon got him in the right on the carotid artery but um yeah sad sad but um this is the way of life for them. Okay. If you can hear all the bees, there you can see them there ton of African killer bees. There's a hive right behind this tree. Let's see, I think. Yeah, it's one guy, he's digging in for some honey. Let me move around the tree. All right, so he's in. There we go. He's not even bothered with smoking the bees out. These guys, tell you what, man. Got to be tough to live out here, and they are. I'm immersed in the bees right now myself, but it's funny enough, they're not really stinging. So I just finished our baboon hunt, grabbing some uh, energy on the road. Look at that. African killer bees. For anyone that's allergic, this would be, it would be in a very, very dangerous position right now. There we go. They're well earned honey after a successful hunt. Skinning the baboon. <laughs> This is the, the elderly man, Mzee, Mutana Mzee. 
Eh. Unafanya nini? Ah. Tunatoa tu uchafu wa tumbo. Tu kwa tumbo. Eh. He's cleaning out all the stomach contents from the stomach and the intestine. Um, as they will eat the stomach and the intestine. So they just remove all of that foul, rancid <laughs> uh, contents, which smells just lovely standing right here. Um, and yeah, so they utilize almost every single part of the animal. It's pretty spectacular. And over there, you've got the skinned baboon. This is the baboon skin, all staked out, stretching and drying what they typically will use the baboon skin for is kind of like a cape and it acts as camouflage so they'll kind of wrap themselves that around their body like a cape and uh, they say it camouflages them from other animals this is the baboon meat that they're busy sun drying um, and uh, this over here is actually the baboon skins um, from previous baboons that they've hunted and they simply use the hides as camouflage it does protect them from the acacia thorns in this area which is pretty important because those things get you all the time as well as they say as camouflage the baboon is the most sort of sacred animal to hunt they love the meat more than any other animal so it's uh, very important for them to have these eating all of the meat from the head the cheeks yeah. There we go. You've got the baboon. They've just eaten the brains, which they love. Put the jawbone, the lower jaw. Mm, big feast. Big feast. Stop, Sana. Chakula Kizuri. <laughs> Look at these baboon teeth. Got some big chompers. They're skewering it on a steak, they're going to lightly salt it, and then they're going to smoke it over the fire to preserve it. They're not going to be doing a full cold smoke, it's going to take a long time. This is just to basically seal the outside of the meat, dry it out so that no flies will land on it. Um, preserves for long enough. Um, they will eat the meat quicker than... Um, they, they'll eat the meat pretty quickly so they don't need to do a, a long smoke. Um, but at least this will preserve it for a week or so. So here they <coughs> they are putting the tail from the from the baboons that were hunted on one of the bows and then newly made bows for decoration. probably can't hear it but there's hyenas in the background and they're not too far from where I'm camping so it's got to keep the fire going keep my knife by my side <laughs> Mm. 
This is a weaver, weaver bird nest, which has been abandoned. So there yeah, we have some really good tinder. Put that in my pocket and take it back to camp. So right here is the what they call the tandala, which is the kudu. Um, one of the biggest uh, deer or buck around the area and there's not just one of them walking through there's actually many so we're right out in the morning hunt to kind of suss out where these kudu have been moving and right now this is at the toga farm they're growing corn and uh, like most deer or buck around the world they love corn so they've been frequenting this field and the chief was just busy telling me what they've been doing they've been traveling from that direction coming on through and then they head down into the valley so I think his plan is to put up a blind in this area and uh, and, and come out and, and see if we can uh, ambush these these kudu at a later stage. But that's an amazing animal to get because they are huge. A lot of food, a lot of raw hide to use, a lot of sinew, everything they need. Check it out, as fresh as can be, kudu, kudu dung that literally is leaving a when uh, in skin, it is so fresh. Awesome. for the Hadza stealing a watermelon from the Datoga. <laughs> they grow watermelon and corn out here. So here they go. He's about to shoot his feet. Got him. There he is there. Oh, you got it. My father. My figure. You can't see there's a bush baby right at the top there. He hit it. But it's not falling down. Well, I am headed on a Tandala hunt, a Kudu hunt, with the chief. Just me and the chief. Sorry about the wind, if you can't hear too well, but uh, talking as I'm walking. I'm being, I feel so honored for the chief to invite me to sit in a blind with him tonight on this hunt for the kudu, which is a very big, big buck or deer here in Africa. So I've got a poison tipped arrow, we've got a our blinds are prepared and we're gonna go and sit in them all night long. Disturbed area over here. This is where the kudu have been walking. You can see that area up there, the clearing. It's a slight trail, slight game trail. Down here you can see all the disturbance. We've just walked in there too though. And they come down from the bank there their bedding areas up in that area so they have also have followed down this dry creek bed so um, very heavily used area the chief is in here busy clearing out a blind in the middle of the bush right here it's kind of like a little island on either way on either side of where they're traveling so it's absolutely perfect he's smack bang in the middle give him like a 270 degree um, view of 
all the directions that they could possibly come from. What a night on the hike back to the village. Um, wow, so we took a, got into our blind as the sun was setting and we stayed in the blind um, till about um, about sort of 2 a.m. We were both taking a rest but I couldn't sleep. Woke up to a huge kudu. <laughs> towering over us I kid you not it was unbelievable the unfortunate thing is that there was absolutely no time to grab the bow because he had already spotted me as I moved when I noticed that he was there he eyed us for a while 10 yards away 10 yards and, uh, and then he made a big and then bolted so man there's a lot of them around so then we moved to a different blind because we knew he probably wasn't going to come back to that one and uh, unfortunately there was no luck there. Um, there there is a lot of kudu in this area big family and it's just all about time just got to keep coming back put in the time and we'll get one but that was what an adrenaline rush to see such a large animal that close huge huge horns um, yeah, had a good, I mean, that, at that distance, it was easy to see, see him, you know, even though it was a pretty dark night, lots of hyenas in the distance, um, yeah, good night. Uh. So this is the baobab tree chief's chopping into, when, during the dry season, when the water is really scarce, what they'll do is they'll chop pieces of the wood off of the baobab tree and suck out the moisture. Moisture is stored inside the baobab tree, inside the wood. So, it's uh, pretty saturated and this will keep them going in tough times. This is Msandile chopping into the stingless beehive up in a, in a second baobab. In the top of a baobab tree. Anyway, so now we're getting some honey in the baobab and uh, they'll use smoke to smoke them out and uh, hopefully we'll get some a good sugar dose which would be much welcomed after a several days of uh, pretty grueling physical exertion. Just handed up a smoking coal from the fire. He's put it into the uh, hive, smoking the bees out. Mm. Amazing. Oh, yeah. Just came back with a whole bunch of honey. Look at these guys.